there are five candles lit. Yesterday, we heard about Jesus entering Jerusalem. The gates were flung wide open, and Jesus entered, riding upon a young colt. People took off their clothes and spread them along the pathway. They laid palm branches down and shouted, Hosanna, Hosanna, blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Jesus went to the temple. He looked around for a little bit and then left the city again and went out to Bethany to stay there. This is where our story picks up. The next day after leaving Bethany, Jesus was hungry. From far away, he noticed a fig tree and leaf, so he went to see if he could find anything on it. When he came to it, he found nothing except leaves, since it wasn't the season of figs. So he said to it, No one will ever again eat your fruit. His disciples heard this. They came to Jerusalem. After entering the temple, he threw out those who were selling and buying there. He pushed over the tables used for currency exchange and the chairs of those who sold doves. He didn't allow anyone to carry anything through the temple. He taught them, Hasn't it been written, My house will be called a house of prayer for all nations, but you have turned it into a hideout for crooks. The chief priests and legal experts heard this and tried to find a way to destroy him. They regarded him as dangerous because the whole crowd was enthralled at his teaching. When it was evening, Jesus and his disciples went outside the city. What an amazing sight this must have been. I wonder what it would have been like to have been there, to see what was going on here when Jesus was flipping over these money tables. It doesn't say it in this particular reading, but he makes a cord, a, a, a rope of cords, a whip of cords, and he drives the people, both those selling and buying, out of the temple. I wonder what it would have been like to have been there, to see what was going on, to see what people were seeing, to see those who were upset at what was going on, to see people who were happy about what was going on. What would you have heard, I wonder? People supporting Jesus? People cursing Jesus? And the smells of all the animals all around. I wonder if it was hot or if it was cold, if the sun was shining or if it was overcast. I wonder what the air would have tasted like with all of this going on. Jesus drove out the money changers. The money changers were people who were blocking people's access to God. They put a condition between God and the people. Change the money. Change your un fit unholy money for something much more holy at a very unreasonable price. Now, these people were stopping people from having a relationship with God and with one another. I wonder what is blocking us in our lives from having a relationship with God and with other people. We don't have money changers today in this way, but I wonder what is blocking our relationship with God. On a Sunday morning, from uh, coming to church or from um, enjoying church in a virtual fashion, is it a few more minutes of sleep? Is it because you want to watch the morning news or watch some movie on Netflix or Amazon Prime Video? What's stopping us from having a relationship with God? But beyond just on Sunday mornings, what stops us from having a relationship with one another? Loving God and loving our neighbor are the two foundational pieces for what it means to live out our salvation. What's getting in our way? Is our smartphone getting in our way from having a relationship with other people, not having to talk to other people because we have our phones? Uh, is it uh, movies? Is it video games? Is it our own attitudes? our own judgments, our own insecurities, our own fears? 
What stops you from having a relationship with God and with people? And then know that Jesus has thrown over the tables. Jesus has turned upside down the forces of this world. That you have access to God and you have access to having a relationship with other people. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you so much that you have sent Jesus into our lives in order to throw over the tables of the things blocking us from having a relationship with God and with other people. And we pray that you continue to bless our relationships, bless the people in our lives whom we want to have a closer relationship with, bless our time together and remove all the obstacles that might stop it from happening. Bless also our lives in a way that takes away the things that stop us from having a better relationship with you. Help us to pray. Help us to talk to you in an open and free manner. Uh, We pray all of this as we approach Good Friday and ultimately Easter, the signs of your power and your reign in this world. And we pray in the holy, strong name of Jesus Christ. Amen. There are four days left until Jesus is crucified.